middle. The two umpires for this third day of the second three mobile test match. The South Africans, two for 169, with Herschel Gibbs going really nicely on 54. He is a key figure because he has the range of stroke play to take the game away from the Australian bowlers. Jacques Cullis is in terrific form this uh, last year. He really has played out of his skin. He's uh, a more sedate sort of player, but a pivotal figure. And then uh, Jacques Rudolph, who made that splendid hundred to save the game in Perth. So plenty for all the South Africans to look forward to in a strong batting lineup. The Australian bowlers worked very hard yesterday and bowled very well. McGrath, 14 overs, eight maidens, one for 17, was top class, particularly with uh, the new ball. Brett Lee got one to swing late at Graham Smith and trapped him LBW. Andrew Simons did well with uh, some lively outswingers. Shane Moore, nothing as yet. And uh, Stuart McGill had a little injury to deal with. Uh, plenty of graft for the Australians, but not quite the reward that they might have hoped for. The pitch, well, it's had a lot of rolling and uh, various views on it. It's uh, a little drier. Clearly, it's uh, a little firmer. And uh, there was a suspicion from the players that it was gathering a little pace. But uh, we've certainly seen enough seam movement to uh, encourage the Australian bowlers. It's a beautiful batsman, Jack Callis. Technically sound, strong through there. This one in the gap between gully and second slip. That's four. And he's a one-pace batsman. He never really takes control. He, he'll bat all day or make a big hundred, where the other end gives us but more flair. It's probably a good combination. This one he just works away off the back foot, safely through the gap for four. It was catchable if there'd been a man there. They've uh, got two slips, uh, well now they're making the change. Bad pat on this occasion. The other man, Herschel Gibbs. It's got all the strokes, technically not all that sound, but he'll take you on. He's uh, been quite watchful in this innings. This is seven boundaries. When he's on fire, he's just beautiful to watch. Yes, yes. Oh dear, he hits his gone. Oh, Simons as well. That would have been a tragedy for South Africa. The pressure's been building and building and building. Terrible call, Callis gave up, Andrew Simons went bang and he missed. All those hours of practice of picking up and throwing down the stumps. Straight enough but over the top. Slow ball and he gets a run. He'll pick up two, second scoring shot of the morning. McGrath couldn't wait any longer to bowl a, a slow ball. 67 overs gone, two for 178. Catch! Oh, it's in the air, but it's also in the gap. Not even the sweeper can do anything about that. Short and wide, spinning away, right into the cut shot of Herschel Gibbs. Herschel Gibbs, he missed the opportunity, the, the previous short delivery, he hit it straight at Ponting. What you've got to do is put the loose ones away, preferably along the ground. Little fuller for McGill, same, same width, but better length. 69 overs bowled, so 11 overs till a new ball is due, but the Australians have just introduced spin into the attack. Substantial starts by all the South African batsmen. They're working hard. Oh, there's a hook shot. He's nearly hit his stumps and he's been hitting the melon. Well, up to this point, Chuck Kerkellis had eschewed the hook shot. Obviously, the fact that he hasn't scored runs for quite some time, must be nearly 40 minutes now, has uh, made him decide to play the hook shot. He was very, very late 
ball was through him and then he almost had to do the uh, low hurdles to avoid the stumps the ball hit him before the bat was uh, around so he obviously can be uh, persuaded to play the hook shot from Brett Lee softened him up with a bouncer and then right through him with the Yorker Jake Callis a very very good defensive player that takes some doing to hit his stumps and Brett Lee has done it South Africa have lost their third wicket you notice with the bouncer he's a little slow to play the hook shot he's also slow to play the defensive shot magnificent wicket Great execution by Brett Lee. Jacques Callis, 23 departs. 3 for 184. Nashville Prince comes to the crease. Jacques Rudolph not in the attack just yet. Averaging 35, his highest 139. Not out, scored earlier this year in his 14th test match. And he's up against the fired up Brett Lee. Well, Prince got bogged down in Perth. He doesn't want to allow the same thing to happen here at the MCG because that's what the Australians have done this morning. Choked off the runs. Oh. 153.1 Ks, that one didn't get the control right, but didn't he get it right when he badged Jacques Callis? Three balls ago, bang, on the helmet. If Jacques Callis had stumbled a bit more and bent that right knee, he would have knocked his stumps with his pads. Didn't matter. With the next ball, Brett Lee did it for him. Oh. Speared in at the pads. That's the gap that's been left for the leg spinner rather than the flipper. And it's worked. It's worked. The South Africans now are defending. He's out of his crease. Well, I don't know about playing big shots. What he's got to do is work the ball around off Shane Moore. If you happen to get a boundary off Shane Warne that's terrific it's a very good shot to start with but he's got to look for singles oh, positive and he's worked that into a gap there's the single it's good that he's using his feet the, the thing is he should have got a single off the previous ball just short onto the back foot all he had to do was just work it into the onside and it might have even been two there if he'd have worked it nicely that's the sort of opportunity that you can't afford to miss if you do miss those opportunities paralysis can set in and he loves it three for 187 got that through it may not go to the boundary once again good use of the feet national prince oh. well, that's the one that's got to be dealt with the shortish delivery and the little fumble down there not uh are off umpire says not out well, no referrals very confident isn't he the umpire down there Asat Ralph has had a very good game here comes the throw yeah pretty straightforward taken really was ponting almost moving forward to take the catch there and South Africa have lost their fourth wicket what a superb catch by Ricky Ponting this went quick look how far Ashwell Prince has come down he's a good meter out of his ground Ponting has stood his ground and taken a superb catch big breakthrough for Australia four for 192 South Africa 
Jacques Rudolph is the uh, new batsman. He fought it very well over in Perth. Uh, boy, he's going to have a scrap on his hands uh, today as well. Things uh, aren't looking too good now. And he's out there because of this very good catch by Ricky Ponting. Not easy at bat pad on the offside to stand your ground when a batsman comes at you. And that's what happened there. Prince came advanced towards Warren. This hit the pad and then flew up onto the bat and flew out quickly. Ponting stood his ground, watched the ball and took a superb catch in his left hand. It's good captaincy from Ponting because he brought Warren on and, and then a great catch. Oh, and he's bit the outside edge again. That's another good delivery. The end of a great over. Four for 192. outside leg stump would be my guess Pat! oh and uh, Ponting diving away there now I'm not too sure that there was any bat in that one it, uh, it didn't sound like it uh, just judging by what came through the stump mics but uh, the Aussies all had their hands in the air a couple of noises again I've got to feel this might have been arm or even the ribcage, certainly bounced and spun again. Four for 192. Oh. oh, and that's a beautiful shot. That's a magnificent cover drive. Herschel Gibbs, when he's going, is good to watch, and that's an example of wonderful batting. He's one of the finest plays you're really going to see through the offside. Herschel Gibbs loves that area there, which is quite unusual for top-order players. He loves to open the face of the bat. And... That's the only place that's vacant at the moment, that area uh, behind screw on the leg side, leg slip. And uh, he managed to get uh, that one away in that area. And uh, it gets him off the mark so he's got one now Rudolph of 12 deliveries Catch! Oh, oh and uh, diving around that silly point boy he's alive there today he's had his coffee this morning things have been working for him so far today Ricky Ponting I'm not sure he's actually hit that Ricky Ponting is looking for anything his plans have been working well brought Shane Warne into the attack as soon as Ashwell Prince walked out to bat and he was rewarded with a wicket thanks to a great catch of his own oh. and there's a fair bit of skill in that a great dollop of it it's a brilliant stroke he needs a fight back now from uh, the South Africans that one it was pretty much straight on. It was uh, more an overspinner than a giant leg spinner. But it was uh, very well dealt with by Jacques Rudolph. <laughs> Who has got away with it. And only just. When the ball hung in the air, we all had our hearts in our mouths. when those for the fielder where for a moment he thinks he's going to be able to get there that's miscued off the outside edge now can he get in far enough to dive forward well difficult well it's the price that Warren pays and it's unusual for Warren to have somebody defending out of cover usually Warren would have a cover ring with a more orthodox extra cover fielder and encourage your batsman to try to hit over the top I guess he feels with Herschel Gibbs he doesn't have to do any encouraging Jacques Rudolph played for the spin. It's a big outside edge, but the batsman wasn't absolutely certain whether it was going to be the leg spinner or the one coming into him. Nice easy touch in that stroke. 
and certainly the bounce Rudolf chose not to hit it too hard and make sure of two rather than risk not getting four Wow, that's a splendid stroke absolutely committed to that one and just about gets a boundary for it that is a great feature of Jacques Rudolph's play, his ability either side of extra cover. It's four for 210. Catch. Well, there's four. And a good shot. It wasn't all that short. Now, it may have been that uh, Herschel Gibbs picked it as a particular delivery and uh, reckoned the pull shot was on, but it wasn't very short. He played one of those yesterday where he picks the wrong one quickly. Yeah. Got him! Yeah. Well, there's a way to start a spell. And that was a magnificent piece of bowling. Lee knew what he wanted to do. He wanted to get that ball right up at Rudolph and he wanted to swing it in from outside Rudolph's off stump. That is brilliant ball. Wonderful seam position. Ball just clipped the top of the stumps and uh, the bail. Five for two, fourteen. Lee's got him. Rudolph for thirteen. And Mark Boucher now has to come in with the the umbrella field. Four slips in a gully. Point behind square. Mid off. Mid on. Long leg. Just moments until lunch to survive. And Brett Lee with the adrenaline pumping. Oh, hello. Magnificent start with the new ball. From a bowler who seems to grow into his work almost by the minute. Oh, what a ball. That's just about the perfect delivery. nice to play that has to be horribly close it's not out says Steve Buckner oh by heaven that must have been close to LBW He'll get four for it, but McGraw will get encouragement for it. Just moments till lunch, and that's a bit of an airy stroke. And there's a very elegant bit of batting and a good bit of timing. Herschel Gibbs. Well, a bit of a cliche, but it's all happening at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Square drive on each occasion. Yeah, very nice that last one. He's made it safely to lunch. That has been a riveting morning session of play here. Third morning of the second three mobile test match. South Africa of five down for 226. Three for 57 in the morning session. Through Gilchrist. Just had a mark to pass for the Imperial Grandstar. With the gloves. The Prince of Wicket Clippers, as we call him here in the country box, Ian Healy. This one. Just a little bit too casual after lunch. That was a nice meat pie. This time is finally through. 
Boucher finds the rope the boundary. Nicely timed off drive. That's the thing about Mark Boucher. If he's there for a while, he'll score some runs. He's always looking to be aggressive. That's what you should be expecting from your top order players. And I think that's where South African top order have fallen down. And they've been showing up a bit. Or they're likely to be showing up a bit by Mark Boucher because he's always looking for runs. Not always boundaries, but runs. Nice stroke, nice cover drive. Put to the pitch of the ball. Pick up three. Really knocked the bars off there. But uh, Boucher's showing there that when you put to the ball and placing it beautifully through cover. He's moved to ten with a glorious off drive for four now. Beautiful square is cover drive for three. Brash over the top. Good shot. Boucher, he's the man. He's going to take the attack up to the Australian bowlers with the new ball. Much needed. Yes, there's a lot to like about his batting. The way he goes about uh, an innings. If he gets anything loose, he's looking to put it away. But in between time, let's find another way to score some runs as well. Second boundary for Boucher. Very positive player. There's again. And it's through again. Fine shot. This is the perfect cover drive. Good hard chase, but it's not on. So Boucher breaking the shackles for South Africa by intelligent batting. Perfect placement of the feet. He gets to the pitch of the ball and he just strokes through the line. Look at that. That's a glorious stroke from Wicked Batsman. Yeah, top order batsman would be delighted with these two. Didn't attempt to hit that one on the ground. It was always going over the top. But this is a glorious cover drive. Magnificent footwork. That's why his placement is so good. Good reply. First time he's found the gap. He gave him some width. He was looking for the outside edge. That was a fine shot. 250 comes up for South Africa. That's the difference between Boucher and Gibbs. Gibbs relies on uh, pure power to pierce the field. He just hits it as hard as he can and hopes that it misses a fielder. Whereas uh, Boucher gets into perfect position and just strokes the ball into the gap. Gibbs' other method is to go over the top of the field. Two balls remaining. Gone again, but the bottom edge has got a bit of luck, that's four more. That's what you need. He's shaken up here. There's no doubt about that Lee's shaken him up and so despite the two boundaries, it was very, very lucky. And Bouch is coming down and saying, hang on. You're in the eighties. We need a big score here. Settle down. That's full credit to Mark Boucher. Just one ball remaining this over. Good team batting. relies heavily on his uh, on his hands that's a beautiful time here's a beautiful time of the ball Mark Boucher I heard Liam Chapman and Bill Laurie talking about it that was not much more than a, a forward defensive stout bat that he's got and thick edges on it sets up early foots down bat speed good very nice star jump by the umpire it's got to be close it's gone a long way across there and he's given it that's the wicket that australia desperately wanted and i tell you what andrew simons wanted it real bad gets a chance to contribute in this test match and he's loving every minute of it nips it back beautifully the man's out at deep mid wicket but for no reason other than to trap him in front it's full it nips back beats the bat hits him in front of middle on the knee roll simons gets his first 
pull shot looked like it might have to be played but he double bluffs with the off cutter Mark Boucher departs for 23 6 for 260 Sean Pollock moved out to the middle in replace of Mark Boucher average of 31 more than useful batsman Sean Pollock high score of 111 over 3,000 test match runs to go with his 380 odd test match wickets so he is a good cricketer loves a fight too oh! well Ian Healy was saying earlier that I thought that Andrew Simons bowled without luck yesterday must have beat about seven or eight times he may have just got one back here hit Mark Boucher where just above the knee roll now may have been a little unlucky there I'm interested to see what Hawkeye has to say whether he thinks it's going on to hit the stumps or just over the top and just missing the top of leg what Hawkeye tells us and I tend to agree may have been a little unlucky there oh! Simons has got it he's got the wicket six for 260 in the air it's safe again and once again Herschel gives it hits a boundary and moves into the 90s he hangs in there but now he might have the pressure off he's been trying to play that shot for a long time and now that Bouch is out and Pollock, Boyer, Nell and Natini are the only batsmen to come maybe the pressure's off him he's just going to go for it it might come off for him or we might find him out soon Ricky Ponding's dropped the third slip out. Now the offside field's a little more packed than it was that delivery. Yeah, it was good planning from Ricky Ponding. I think that's an important point to make last over. We talked about the field he set on the onside. It suggested there was going to be a few short ones. Simons didn't bowl it short. He went for the stumps. The line was good. It's just a little high from our side replay suggested. It certainly was a good piece of bowling and good captaincy. It certainly looks much worse on that one, doesn't it? It looks like it hits him on the top of the knee roll, even with that replay there. That's off the toe of the bat. Just get a single. Mark Boucher with a bit of luck, but no luck with this one. He's got Herschel Gibbs for 94. What a magnificent four balls he's produced. The length consistent and used some natural variation. Off cut, one to skid a bit low and one to clean him up. Oh! A man who's been out there for 234 balls, beating all ends up. A gutsy knock by Herschel Gibbs, but Simons undoes him. Seven for 265. Ricky Boyer is the new batsman, replacing Herschel Gibbs, who made 94 from 234 deliveries. He held out for, and eventually, it was Andrew Simons who got one through him. And it's got an excellent combination going here at the moment, has Ricky Potty. He's got Brett Lee at one end, bowling quick and softening batsmen up. At the other end, so Andrew Simons is hitting, there must be a little spot there where the ball is just bouncing unpredictably. The odd one's bouncing a bit, and the odd one's just shooting through a bit lower. Oh! He's bowling hand grenades. <laughs> He's landing them perfectly. We've seen four balls land there and do different things. It's come off the backhand of Herschel Gibbs onto the stumps by the look of that down to the base of the stumps what a nasty sound to hear on 94 not out it's turned into 94 and see you later boy years away you get at least two for that Hardly anyone on the league side, only two men. Brett Lee will get it. He's, he's the man who's a fine league, keeps it to two. 
Simons has got another wicket. South Africa are seven for 267. Nice little session at the moment for Australia. Two big wickets in the last 15 minutes or so. Herschel Gibbs, the last man out for 94. Mark Boucher just before him for 23. Two new batsmen at the crease. Brett Lee continuing. A nice shot. Nicely timed. Oh, and a big shout. The Australians think he's got, they've got him. Steve Buckner is not impressed at all. He just walked away, and I don't think Sean Pollock's all that impressed either. And uh, just looking at Sean Pollock there, he's gestured that it may have just flicked his back arm, his upper arm. There's certainly a noise, but uh, just judging on Sean Pollock's reaction, he certainly doesn't think it was bad. Oh, well done, Steve Buckner. He doesn't get the value of that replay. We already now know it's a magnificent decision. The Australians were all over it. The gloves are up there. The shoulder of the bat was up there. The ball seam position changed direction. Gilchrist rarely goes up when it's not out. Lee's all over it. The slips are charging at the umpire. He says, no, not out. Here's your hat. Get on with it. There's a stroke from Pollock. Wasn't really short from McGrath. Yes, yes, yes. He's one of those you don't underestimate, uh, Sean Pollock. He's very capable of scoring quickly. Very free-flowing batsman, and as a boy, was incredibly talented as an all-round cricketer. His batting really has diminished in effect the longer he's played the game, the more he's bowled. But he can play a bit. Look at that for a correct record, too. 31.4 with the bat. Tight session of cricket this morning and an equally tight session of cricket this afternoon. 55 runs from 17 overs, the two wickets taken. Run rate's gone up a bit. It's uh, just below two this morning. It's just above three now. It's mainly due to Herschel Gibbs. Andrew Simons continues. Simons might be having a problem with the bat but uh, with the ball at the moment he's uh, having a lot of fun and it's being effective too if you watch this I think you'll notice that it keeps down a little bit and uh, would probably have knocked middle stump out of the ground there she goes that is out absolutely plummet is no doubt about it smashing uh, the edge of middle stump there and uh, unfortunately the end of Sean Pollock LBW for nine and Simons now has three for 46. This is the uh, dismissal again. It stayed down a bit, no doubt about that. That is uh, the sort of thing they're going to really confront in second innings of South Africans because they happen to be batting last. And, uh, oh boy, isn't he happy about this? There's a scoreboard that reflects some top-class bowling today from Australia. Overnight, South Africa, a couple down for 169 with Gibbs and Callis unbeaten. And since then, consistent and intelligent bowling has worn them down. Forced error, exploited little vagaries in the pitch. South Africa have suffered today simply because of Australia's professionalism and discipline. It really has been 
an impressive effort. It's Glenn McGrath who will continue it. He bowls to Nicky Boyer. In uh, 89, I think it was, when uh, we first saw this sort of thing happening. Merv Hughes was the man then. Well, it's uh, Brett Lee now. He's got him going. And then he went over on his back and uh, asked them if they could do that. And of course they can't. So, uh, one up to Brett Lee. well placed out of a couple it's just really a question now where you taking control out there yep brilliant stroke really fast hands there to get the ball where he wanted it yes he uh Hit that one pretty well, didn't he? Let's see if we can pick up the line of this delivery. Outside off stump, he comes down on the ball quite nicely. He manages to get it away right off the middle of the bat. So Nicky Boyer has got to find a way, as Mark Nicholas had says, has said, of um, piling on some runs here. And uh, in fact, giving the strike, it's eight for 287. And a very nice little leg glance too. Got him. So the challenge was issued by Ricky Ponting and he's had immediate success. Well that's good thinking from at least two people out there. Ponting the captain who was up with it, right up with the pace and warned the bowler who wanted it. Boye, well, the sweep may not have been the ideal delivery to that, unless you made contact. Boye goes, he made 12, 9 for 291. Now Makaya Antini, who comes in at number 11. Makaya Antini will play shots because uh, he knows no other way he has no other way has no defense and there's immediately a man out at deep mid wicket where he likes to go there's a long on and there's a deep backward square that's his favored side the on side oh. <laughs> uh, the flipper first up Sometimes a good ploy, particularly for someone who wants to uh, whack it away on the onside. Nicky Boye is beautifully bowled, dropped underneath the bat, and then spun in to hit the stumps. Just a single oh, um, there for uh, no. Uh, yes, um, it may well be. His problem at test level is uh, that he can't quite work out what to do is I think he's a bit scared to go out and play his natural game which is to hit the ball he's a tremendous striker of the ball and uh, if uh, what he's done today is uh, going to help him in that regard it'll be terrific oh there's a long on in position the thing about those three wickets for, for Simons is that he will now feel I've made a contribution to this team which uh, which helps to make him feel part of the side which might just be the thing that relaxes him a bit when he walks out uh, with the willow in his hand in the second innings. Looking for a couple. That's pretty well timed. Looked like just a push. Just fractionally over pitch. And deliberately hit 
into that specific gap, the one between uh, the man at mid-on, rather deepish, and uh, the man at deep mid-wicket. Just a roll of the wrist. <laughs> He's hit it right into the gap. That's very good placement. That brings up the 300. Well, you'd reckon it'd be impossible to get a ball along the ground, partly in the air and then along the ground, between those two fielders. Oh, that's well bowled, beautifully flighted. Well, that was it. Beautifully struck again. So three useful boundaries for South Africa in the last couple of overs. It's nine for 305. Two boundaries for Nell, two boundaries for Ntini. And uh, the lead now for Australia is 50. Gill bringing up uh, mid on. Brett Lee at mid on. Mid wicket is deep. That's where it goes. They're likely to spread a bit more on the onside now with Ntini on strike. There's a long off going into position as well. There's the three men out on the onside. Four men on the boundary in all. Uh, no one to save the single at mid on. Yeah. Which is where Kyron Tierney has hit it. He's got two slips for Ntini. I'd like to see uh, the second slip, who is uh, Matthew Hayden, just drop back. Not, not for Nell, but for Ntini. Drop back to backward point. I reckon that's where Ntini is likely to hole out. He beats Warren and that'll run away to the boundary. So some useful runs coming here at the end for South Africa. Very useful and I don't know how that got through, uh, through Warren. It was only a very fine nick. on the offside and it's taken so Stuart McGill gets the last wicket and Michael Hussey gets his first test match catch and the Australians lead by 44 there's a good piece of bowling McGill spinning the ball just as much as Warren and he gave Nell the opportunity to go for the big one the man having been brought in from deep mid wicket Ponting pulled out of it Hussey got it 311 that's a very good performance from Australia at one point they look to be in uh, deep stuck in their own first innings now they have a lead didn't take it comfortably in the end probably better off with the hands uh, cupped the other way rather than the fingers pointing to the air uh, Ponting will be happy. A lead of 44. Lee bowled brilliantly to pick up three. And a good revival there from uh, Andrew Simons picking up three. South Africa dismissed for 311. And there he is, Matty Hayden with a batting average of 53. Look at that higher score, 380. Boy, it must be lovely having a high score like that alongside your name. 
And uh, down the other end, Paul Jakes, uh, a left-hander on uh, debut. Made two in the first innings, and uh, although he probably realises that he won't play in the next Test match, he's got a wonderful future ahead of him, and he'll be looking to impress in the second innings, that's for sure. Sean Pollock uh, has been uh, opening the bowling for South Africa for so many years now. He's got all the experience in the world, losing a little bit of sting. But uh, when he gets it right, he gets that outswing going. Uh, in it'll be to these two, to the left-handers. And uh, he's one of those bowlers who's capable of making inroads early on. Will realise how important it is here. So the deficit lead the Australians have is 44 at the start of the second innings. The Australians off the mark in the second innings. In his 108th test match, Steve Buckner. cut that one nice and firmly it's gone straight through the hands of one of those gullies third man just wide of the outstretched hand there of the finer of the two gullies close call well, there's a bit going on out there Kyron Tierney has had one he's now found the edge and uh, not quite catchable height a little bit of the unorthodox stuff that we've been reading about uh, pulling it away just straight a bit on for four it was a good shot I don't think uh, he was uh, hustled by the pace he got himself in a position quite well and well perhaps he didn't get it off the middle but he did roll his wrist enough to keep it down bear in mind that uh, Pollock picked up Phil Jakes in the first innings with that man just in your picture there at short leg Ball. Two more to Jakes. 17 on the board. The Australians lead by 61. And Ntini, who bowled the most magnificent delivery, last ball, last over. About to start his uh, third over. And no wicket for five. Started well today. Oh, and he's beaten him again. Well, that's two beautiful deliveries back to back. Yeah. Wow. That in itself was a little touch of unorthodoxy. Did he club that away? Certainly did. Short delivery, and uh, he's punished it. Uh, I think he was waiting for something just a little bit shorter. Should he have a real go at it? Hit the ball down and uh, right off the middle of the bat. So that's the third boundary now of the innings. Jakes has got two of them. Got into that gap again. And uh, Hayden sends him back, settles for two. Oh, well played. Well, when he's playing well, that's where he hits him. Straight down the ground and hard. Well, that's his strength. When he's really batting well, Matthew Hayden 
plays uh, beautiful shots between mid on and mid off and straight down the ground. Batting out of the crease, and that's when he's playing at his straightest. Hayden's given that plenty and kept it down too, he rolled his wrist nicely on uh, the stroke very good timing like that Jermaine beautifully played a perfect pull shot straight to ground Quickly in the position, very strong onside player, and far too short by short colleague. Here's a poor follow-up to the great ball, the one before. Just a strong jab, well fought a square, not on the bat, but still powerful. Beautifully out of the middle, actually. I thought it was more bottom of the bat than that. Nicely played, forcing off the back foot through cover. And happy with two, Miss Fielder gets three. And the crowd will let them know you can't make too many mistakes at the MCG. It's Kruger, he's on the field. Back foot again, punched powerfully. Check the pace of the big man as well as the fumble. Double fumble. Play on. Great shot. The man may, may get he does. Knocks it down. Two. Bill Jake's starting to blossom here. He's a very good square of the wicket player. Mark, Mark Taylor's a big rap for Bill Jake's because he's a New South Wales blue. But even apart from that, he thinks he's a fine straight player. Beautifully balanced on that occasion, used the crease, got back and gave himself some room and went bang. Oh, there's four. Far too straight, Jack Callis. Can't bowl with the left hander there. Lovely big glance from Matthew Hayden. Plays that shot beautifully. Jake's on to Bill be feeling comfortable on 28. Out for two in the first innings. Playing some delight for shot square of the wicket. The lead is 97. A danger period. They need four wickets tonight. South Africa to get right back in this game. Can Andre Nell be the key? He's coming around the wicket to Bill Jake's. Quick shout. Yeah! Went for the pull shot. This will be a very interesting decision because around the wicket he'd have to be well back. The angle would be great, but he's gone. That's one for 53. It was a long appeal. The South Africans kept at it. There were two noises for mine. Did he bottom edge it? Straight onto the front pad, above the knee roll, in front of the stumps. The umpire obviously didn't hear two noises. Andre Nell and the slips and the wicketkeeper continued with the appeal for an hour and a half. Bill Jakes is the man that he wants out and he gets him. 28. 1 for 53. Australia now 1 for 97 and 97 ahead. Nine wickets in hand. Magnificent century in the first innings. It was a little bit lucky but you need luck. Look at that career run, 7,979 at 56. He's up with Jack Callis, averaging about 57 at test level. Two slips of gully and a short mid-off for Ricky Ponting. Over the wicket comes Andre now. Good line. Interesting LB that. Right arm ball goes around the wicket. It wasn't a great shot. 
Michael Jakes. He's sort of trying sort to of jab it away. And I wouldn't be over happy if I was a batsman with that. I know you think it's OK, Ian, but coming around the wicket, bouncing. Come on, Ian, what do you reckon? Well, it's hit him in line, hasn't it? The angle, I agree with you, it's a bit suspect coming from around the wicket with a bit of angle there. Now, an umpire must think straight away, oh, I better be careful with those types of decisions. It's hit him on the back leg, that's given him a good opportunity, Steve Buckner, to see exactly where it was going on, past the front pad, and onto the back leg. Oh, I'm, I'm happy enough, but I'd be happy enough either way as well. Funny dry, well fielded. Still gets away. Just the single. And two four again. Hayden's just coming into this shot. He struggled with it in the first innings. He made 65 of a lot of balls, but he struggled with his top hand. Hanging on to the bat and getting the full face of the bat coming down the ground. It's starting to click for him. Day three, innings two. But it should have been driven for 4-2. It's a rank half folly. Well, there's, something, there's a deflection there. Now, the slips think it's bat. So does the bowler. Ricky Ponting is... Oh, he's walking around, not looking all that concerned, but there's certainly a deflection there. Yeah, I think the ball clipped quite low down on uh, Ponting's pad as it drifted down the leg side. Don't think there's bad involved. Just below the knee roll. Good take by Mark Boucher. He's got that one away. Should get two for that. Really important session. Now, there's still something like 21 overs left in the, the game at this stage, or today's play, and 21 vital overs for South Africa. I, I reckon they need another at least two, if not three, wickets in those 21 overs. It's a good shot. Nicely timed. Only lent on by Ponty. Yet the timing's there. Won't quite go all the way, but it'll get three. chance and they're almost a run out too at the non-strikers end well I've got the feeling that's carried to Andre Nell who's dropped it and then Ricky Potting was almost run out from the deflection oh it's definitely carried you're spot on I mean you know they're the little heart I mean he dropped a straightforward one first innings so that's a crime this isn't a crime this is a good effort but it's just ah oh, a finger tipper and it's Hayden too who looks in rare touch chance as well another miss well maybe there's two chances <laughs> oh they both could have been run out in the space of three balls that's Ponting trying to get back in and he wouldn't have made it Mark Taylor's spot on there and now look at Hayden diving in desperation and he wouldn't have made it either now there's a, an unusual Matthew Hayden shot just right back, the gap's left at point for him, he says thank you very much. <laughs> well, he'd argue that he forced the error by the way that he's played thus far, and that he forced Nell into a, a moment of frustration, and therefore looseness, because he was defending him well on the front foot. Well, that's close, that's got to be out, yes, up goes the finger, Sean Pollock has struck. Well, Ricky Ponting uh, doesn't seem to be that happy to me. Uh, I don't know whether there was a little bit of bat in that, but he certainly did stand at the crease for a little while uh, and uh, now is wandering off the ground. But Sean Pollock, uh, certainly if he didn't hit that one, looked to me as if he had him plumb. Looked as though he might have misjudged the length a little bit and gone back to a ball that he would normally play forward to. Doesn't seem to be anything uh, too much wrong with that ball hitting just on the knee roll 
It's two for 82. And Hodge has just arrived. Right, so here we go, Pollock. Well, I, I reckon that Ricky Ponting just made a, a slight error in judgment. A ball that he would normally come forward to. Played basically from the crease, didn't really go back to it. But uh, didn't seem to be too much wrong with that. Just watching that ball, it, uh, if anything, it angled in a little bit uh, towards the shiny sides. So there's a little bit of swing in. He, he may, may have just been looking for Pollock's normal little bit of out drift. On his toes, and uh, he's got it away down towards third man. Hayden is a very aggressive runner. And he was back for three there no time excellent running from Matthew Hayden Hodge playing the ball basically off the back foot so he's always going to be a bit slow to get started Hayden very quick to get through that first run which meant that he was always going to get back and get three for his partner see why they say he would have made a wonderful rugby player brilliant golfer as a youngster great tennis player I just have a look at this agility well, he's given it the head first dive which uh, you can afford to do I guess when there's no fence there it was brilliant it was only centimeters from the from the boundary when he was able to get it back you reckon that would have been a nice uh, Try dive, you reckon, Greggy? Yep, four pointer in the corner. Now, oh, and off the edge again, and no uh, third man down there. This is an area that uh, he's got to be a little careful of. He tends to push a little bit when he first comes in, just uh, on that line on and around off stump. Looks a bit of a candidate, doesn't slip, Gordon? Yes, the bat went on a reconnaissance mission uh, here. Just went searching for the ball. Fortunately, found the big gap between second slip and the gully. Hodge was asleep. That's too OK because there's always a run. It's a good call by Matthew Hayden. 100 up for the Aussies. Takes a lead to 144. Well, yeah, full fetch, oh. or he get, maybe he gets some bat on it. Probably be forward, would be leg wise, or it would be runs. I think it's runs. Runs. Uh, full toss in, not a great stroke, but full value for the shot. Nearly a stumping chance too. He's only got an edge on it, I think. Edge or a pad, and Boucher was hovering. A little deflection was handy. Boy, yeah, late in the day. Can he spin something? Lead is 152, eight wickets in hand. Coming to the end of the third day's play. Tomorrow, Brad Hodge will be 31 years of age. He'll be very keen to make a big hundred in front of his home crowd. Yes, 
Nicely played, soft hands, just a single. Yes. Nice takes a single, he'll get to the safe end, the non-striker's end. Aiden well made 45. Hodge, 17, 38, two boundaries. That's the end of the third day's play. It's two for 110 at the MCG. It's time to say goodnight.